people ask me where did I get the name for the explainer and the fact of the matter is I, I made it up uh, it was a mixture of two words it was explaining the swing plane so it explains the plane explainer we also know in English that a planar surface uh, we understand the word planar p-l-a-n-a-r and then X from expla explainer then somebody phoned me up and said, Luther, do you know that the word explainer is actually the Portuguese word for explain? So I think the, the root of the language is, you know, England and Portugal has converged. So it's an explainer. For me, it explains the plane. Uh, but it's not self-explanatory. Uh, that's what I'm going to do now for you and uh, talk to you about why and how it works. Um, and the simple thing is, that is designed to turn swing thoughts into swing feeling. It's to make you uh, feel the swing rather than think it too much. It also is adjustable to allows you to uh, optimize the swing that you have with your body. It also has to teach you how to hit different shots. And when a player hits a good shot or where you think about elegant swings like Louis West Hazen or Tiger, and you'll hear the pundits on TV, they'll talk about the swing plane. So I just want to deal with that because it's not really the cause of a good swing, swinging and playing. Good playing comes from hitting the right shot from good preparation. You'll know one of my catchphrases is teach the shot the swings for free. So if I teach you to hit the ball properly, to, to control the ball, guess what? That will lead you to the swing plane. In the background, we use the explainer to enhance that plane, but we don't let it interfere with the mental process. There's too much going on you only got two seconds to hit the shot. So, let's just talk about hitting in plane as a principle. Here's a wooden mallet, and here's a little sort of fence post. I've got a golf ball glued on the bottom, but the top is a square cut. And you can see in my wooden mallet that the mallet head is square. Okay, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to drive this into the ground. This would be a useless blow. This would be a glancing blow. But the ball, sorry, the blow that goes down the line of the post, that's a blow in plane. Got it? Useless, glancing, but in plane. And from that we understand that a blow in plane, the most accurate is also the most powerful. If I've got 50 miles an hour in my hammerhead, that is useless. That is glancing, it has some use, but the most powerful blow is the most accurate. That's the blow in plane. Now, I've got 360 degrees of choice, if you just excuse me going past you. Wherever I stand around the post, the idea of hitting the ball to the ground is a blow in plane. So that's what a golf ball is. I've included the golf ball. The golf ball's a sphere, but the principle is the same. A blow in plane is the most powerful, the most accurate. This is useless to me. This is useless to me. But this is the optimum. The most powerful blow is the most accurate. That's a blow in plane. If I turn sideways to the camera, you can see that the hammer or the mallet goes through an arc. It's a circular movement. But you know, in reality, if I'm trying to drive this uh, fence post into the ground, then I'm going down. I'm going to elongate the strike. I'm going to go down the strike for as long as possible. So, that's a blow in plane. I'm going to place the, the ball and the stake, the fence post is pointing down the ball target line. So you can see here, there's the target. This white line goes out through the peg, through the ball out to the camera and that's the ball to target line but it's also the line in which we must hit it in plane so I could hit it here this would be a totally horizontal plane I could come up, up a little bit come off the ground come up a bit more a bit more and the most upright plane would be like a putting stroke it would be this this would be putting but then this would be a wedge plane this would be a six arm plane driver plane Ian Woosnam plane, right? Small, shorter people have a flat plane, taller people, okay? But the blow down the hammer, it doesn't matter what plane you're coming in from, from a putting plane to a driving plane, 
this strike is aligned to the post. And again, while the swing is on an inclined plane, the arc elongates and goes down the post for as long as possible. You've had those shots where it just superb strike and you feel the club face was on the ball for about a week. That's a blow that's in plane and probably out of the sweet spot. So, if I go back to the first principle, the most powerful blow is the most accurate. A glancing blow loses power, loses accuracy. What I've done on my mallet is I've actually sawn it off at a few degrees. So if you have poor club face alignment or if your grip is poor, it's like trying to hit a fence post when there's an angle on the, on the face. That gives me a glancing blow. The square, the square mallet head is great, but the one that's sawn off, you can see it would have a deflection. I can hit the sweet spot with the, the normal mallet, but I can only hit to one side of the sweet spot if the club face or the face of the mallet was shaved off. Now that's what you have, okay? When you hit the ball properly, no matter what loft from wedge to driver, you're in plane. But the moment the face corrupts, you know, you're deflected away from the plane. And people like Dustin Johnson, they essentially, that's what they're actually doing. But they're so talented, they actually can realign the face and get some sort of blow. I would say Dustin Johnson's case, it's cost him at least four majors. All right, let's take that to the golf course and I'll show you what, how it works with a six iron. Okay, so let's just imagine that the fence post is pointing towards the target down the target line. Now, it's in the way, so I've just got to move it to one side, okay? Take my stance. And I just make half a swing, okay? That half a swing will send the ball forward. So, a little half shot, got a little bit of fade on it. What I would prefer so that club head to come in and meet the ball. Can you hear that? And there it is, down that line. You're driving the post along the ground. So if I get that right on this occasion, then the ball should draw a little bit from right to left. So that was a slightly glancing blow. Hopefully on this shot, it'll be a truly square blow in plane. Just half a swing. You can see and hear that that was stronger. So you can see the more powerful, the more accurate you become. Doesn't matter what club you're using. You can be using a wedge up here. That's a blow in plane. A six iron here, it's a blow in plane. A driver back here is still a blow in plane. Doesn't matter whether you're using wedge or driver, the most accurate bow will still be the most powerful.